the U.S. press, because that's where we're kind of focused here, is doing a good job of, of covering events in the world as they would have, say, 20 years ago when they had an army of correspondents to send something right. like this. I mean, I, I agree very much with John that I think we, the cuts that we all know so well about in media have really taken a toll on the coverage that we get worldwide and the cuts to foreign correspondents because those bureaus are expensive to run have cut down on the amount of news that we get. I will say one bright spot, shout out to NPR, has actually increased the number of foreign correspondents that it has had. Um, I think it's more than doubled the number of foreign correspondents in the last decade. So that's at least a positive side. In terms of Mexico and in terms of Baja California, it, the UT used to have, how many people did you have covering Baja California? We were, there were three of us down there every day, plus local people that we hired. So, so three every day. Three every day, an office hired local people, and now it's down to one who's Sandra Dibble, who is the last woman standing covering Baja California for the UT and does the work of about 20 and does an amazing job. But that's really hurt news that the, the cross-border news in the sense that there just isn't as much news that's coming across and there isn't as much news on as many fronts in terms of business. The UT used to have a business reporter who covered and focused mostly on Mexico. There used to be a separate crime reporter. Sandra focused a lot on environment, on arts, and that, that coverage has really diminished and it shrunk down into, in the past years, some of the most important coverage coming out of Baja California, unfortunately, was the drug war. And that was the news, and that's what one had to focus on. Yet there was a lot of criticism on both sides of the border that the media is only focusing on the drug war, and that's hurting the economy in Tijuana, that's hurting tourism, it's hurting investment, etc. But at the same time, there's no way to be able to ignore that news. But because resources are so few in terms of not having a group of people who is doing a wide, a wide span of coverage, it gets whittled down into the most important stories, and I think that that has, has been a real problem. And I think also the people that do come and cover Baja California often just come, fly in, they're there for a day or two, they come with a story in their head of what they're gonna do, how they see it, they find what they need, and they leave. And a lot of that port reporting isn't as fleshed out as it should be and isn't as accurate as it should be. And that then diminishes the news that everyone that everyone gets. And I think, in, uh, you know, in terms of, I was talking to the head of CPJ in Mexico a couple days ago, and he was telling me that the cut to foreign correspondents in Mexico, in Mexico City and throughout Mexico, has really diminished the healthy competition between media outlets for stories. And so there are less stories coming out, and there's less drive to really get at stories. And we were talking about one of the ways around a lot of the silence in Mexico because of the drug cartels of getting that reporting out would be collaboration, which has been talked about a lot, between U.S. media outlets and Mexican media outlets. And one, is, one of his hypotheses was that because there are so few foreign correspondents in Mexico at this point to collaborate with, there isn't a real drive because there isn't so much competition to get those stories out and also they just lack the manpower to really be able to delve into that and to be able to do that.